climate is certainly a crisis. Ireland is now on a legally binding path to net zero emissions no later than 2050 and to a 51% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by the end of this decade. But where are we with that pledge? Eamon Ryan, um, the Environmental Protection Agency said uh, very recently that as it stands with you know, the measures you have in place, our emissions would only fall by 28% by 2030, way off that 51% target. So as it stands, we're failing. Yeah, we'll have to Your go government's failing. We'll have to go further. And the scale of the change is beyond compare. It has to be a change towards a better system. We won't make it by kind of waving our finger at people, blaming people, putting it all up to the householders. We do have to help create a better economy one where we're not as exposed to these high fossil fuel prices. Like this war is actually going to drive us to make the change quicker, not just for climate reasons, not just to restore biodiversity, but also to bring security to our country so that we're not exposed to high fossil fuel prices. So we will need to go further. We will need to go further in tapping into our renewable power, particularly offshore wind, where we have at scale huge resources. We will need to go further in transport, and it's a difficult thing to do because it's about reallocation of road space to make pu public transport work really well and active travel work really well. But that also creates a better system for everyone. We will have to go further in agriculture, and we will have to do that in a way that works for particularly a new generation of young farmers. So we retain family farms so that we give a good income to family farm people on the back of actually protecting okay. nature and restoring nature. You mentioned so all those sectors there and um, I know at the moment you're trying to reach agreement on uh, the emission cuts that every sector uh, needs to achieve. Uh, it was meant to be agreed by the end of June. It still hasn't been agreed and we're all being told, we're all reading that the hold-up is uh, the difficulty in coming to an agreement with agriculture. So agriculture Agriculture is the biggest emitter, isn't it, in then this country? Is that where the difficulty is? I think agriculture and transport, those two areas are going to be the most difficult. In energy, I think we'll make it because, as I said, we have such an advantage and fossil in, in our own power yeah. and fossil fuel is so expensive. Okay, I just want to sort of switch. stick with agriculture just so, at the yes, moment. Yes, there's a real challenge in agriculture. But I believe we can deliver it in a way that, as I said, provides a higher income to Irish farmers, which is the key way of us making this, this, this change. That'll come from a variety of different further measures. Firstly, really developing forestry in a way that it fits in with farming. Not that we're covering every farm in trees, particularly not with the kind of plantations of just single species conifers, mm -hmm. but stitching in native forest within our farming system and giving an income to farmers for that. OK, I just Secondly, sorry, I, I understand some of the, uh, the policies. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're kind of fairly well covered. Uh, the actual target for agriculture, uh, the cuts within agriculture, I think you want it to be around 30%. Is each, that correct? Each sector And has, Charlie McConnell, the Minister for Agriculture, wants it to be closer to 22%. Each, so sect each sector has a what's range. What's the agreement? There isn't an agreement yet, and I hope, I expect we will get agreement in the coming weeks. Where do you think that number should be at? Because I'm obviously, not... you know, all these policies don't mean anything unless we have a particular target. Well, it will be ambitious, because every sector is going to be required to be. It, uh, the level of change in agriculture, even at the lower end, is beyond compare, but I believe we will have to go towards the higher end. I towards believe, the 30? Yes, but if I can just make, make, make the point. The way we've designed our approach to climate change is that it would keep evolving, that we will be held to account if we're not delivering, and then have to change policies so we catch up. So it's not a fixed moment in time. It is, and we will also have to learn, in agriculture particularly, one of the projects we're working on is a review of how we use our land. And actually that, which is halfway through, is going to be critical to work out where is the best place to put these new forests? How do we right. store carbon in our peaty soils? What type of farming or how do we reward the type of farming that helps us meet the, meet the targets? So okay. if we'll continue to evolve, we will learn by doing. And if we don't meet the targets, then we change policy. So this is going to be a changing policy approach to make right. sure we get there. Um, Darren O'Rourke, um, th around 30%. That's where you think this cut It'll needs to be. Um, Mary Lou MacDonald has been asked specifically on a number of occasions for a target for cuts within agriculture. And she has refused to commit to one. You're the climate spokesperson, Shana Fain. Will you put a figure on it tonight? 
Well, I, I won't because Sinn Féin are specifically excluded from this conversation. Um, no, you're included this no, evening. We're having no, a debate between the opposition and uh, the government and okay. you hope to be in the next government. Yeah. So will you put a figure on that and why won't you put a figure on it? So the reason I won't put a figure on it is because the modelling, the detailed research and data analysis that the government have in... Uh, in the, the Climate Change Advisory Council and also in their, in their, their, their uh, in, in private uh, advice as well is not being shared with the opposition. We specifically sought it. There's a McKinsey report. There's other private research that feeds into the models that, that indicates whether we should be at whatever percentage. And it's not just for agriculture, it's for other sectors. But so I, you can't I'll tell make... me whether you think sort of somewhere between 20% and 30% is verging on too high or too low? No, we can't. But what we can say is from the Climate Change Advisory Council, we know that there, the ranges are there and we did engage with the, the Climate Committee in relation to that. What, what I can say is that we agree with the 51% target. We agree that every sector needs to do their fair share and also that there needs to be engagement. That, you know, and... and, and All right, I, I, I suppose we would just really want to talk about the policies, yeah. I suppose, that yeah. are going to get oh, no, us to for that sure, 51% for, for sure, this for sure. evening. And that's exactly what I want to do as well. So, for example... The, the, the focus in relation to agriculture, and it's significant that there is a focus in relation to agriculture because there are other areas that have as much or more to do in relation to it. The focus within agriculture on the herd number, for example, is, is significant. I might but you don't agree I, with cutting the herd, but do I, you? I, no, no I, I don't agree with cutting the herd, but I, I do agree in the first instance with the low-hanging fruit in terms of forestry, in terms of organics, in terms of uh, energy production within farming. Yes. There's huge opportunity there. Even Before, though but, sort of the environmentalists that we would have on this programme say you will never, ever reach the cuts that you need to within agriculture by dealing with just those low well, 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 low-hanging fruit. Well, the truth is we don't know, and certainly we in Sinn Féin don't know because we haven't got access to the information, and we would like access right. to, to the information. But, but I think there's an important point in relation to it. If a just transition means anything, it means working with sectors and not running them off at cliff edge. And I think that's an okay. important principle that needs uh, to apply. Eamon Rain, is cutting the hair off the table for you? Can I say, this won't work. The scale of change we need to make, if this is about divisive politics, and it's blaming one sector versus I the agree. other. And I, myself and Darren, will work together on this, because the work that he's doing and others on the Climate Committee is central to our approach. OK, I just... really good analysis. If I'm, I just can make I'm just conscious I, of time I, here, I, I, and there's but, lots but, to get firstly, through. And it's a really, really big issue for any of our rural viewers. Agreed. What is your position in terms to, of cutting the herd? I agree with what the committee, Darren, was on, the work you did this week, saying one of the ways we can create new income to farmers is using anaerobic digestion mm -hmm. so that some of the grass we're currently giving to cattle go instead to create our own yes. gas. So we don't okay. have to buy just, Porsche gas. Okay, just, just, I know, I know, but I just want an answer on this question. because it's, it, it is pretty much a clear what, yes or no answer. That one cut of the herd or not cut the herd, Minister. One of the is we won't have as many cattle, but we will have greater income. And that's the sort of choices that I think we need to make because that's okay, what so matters to the Irish family. So you think don't cut the herd? We will have to switch and change Irish agriculture, it will introduce a whole range of new streams of income. OK, you're still not making it very clear will, to our viewers this will, evening and to the tens have, of thousands of farmers. Do you think the herd will, needs to be cut or not, will, Minister? It will see a lower number in the herd, but the critical thing is it has a higher income to the farmers, and that's what matters. But, OK, I just want to move on because there's lots to cover this evening. It, it depends. It depends on whether the government gets their act in order in terms of forestry, in terms of those other alternative streams. That, All right. that, that's the, the, the real important factor in terms of agriculture. OK, I want to move on to transport because that's the second biggest uh, emitter of greenhouse gas. Uh, within the programme of government, there was a commitment to ban diesel and petrol uh, cars by 2030. Will that be implemented? Yes, and Europe is also backing that up with a 2035 ban. So we're doing it because of European legislation, not just Irish legislation. It's another example where we'll make that switch because actually the new electric cars are better cars. Mm. They're cheaper to run, they're cheaper to maintain, they're better engines, they're better car. But it can't be just about switching to electric cars. The scale of the change we will need will require us all to switch mode to switch to public transport and particularly to switch to active transport, which is good for our health as well as good for the climate. So how many cars do you think need to come off the road? What I think we do, we need a mix, a, change, a range of different measures in transport. We need to switch to all the cars being electric within, as I said, these next, this next decade plus, all new cars. Secondly, though, we need to reduce the volume of traffic by some 25%. Now, that's really challenging, so it isn't just about... And I think a third measure we will do, we will move to much, much more car sharing and use innovative solutions, because the truth is, 
the car is parked. Most people's cars are parked for about 95% of the time. We can save a lot of money by being really clever in how we provide transport okay. services. It's that scale of change, I think, is going to But come. the ban on new petrol and diesel cars from 2030 that was in the programme for government, you're committing to that this evening? We have, within the European rules, we have to follow the European rules. We want to go faster than the European Union, closer to 2030 rather than 2035. So, yes, and UK and other countries will be going that way. It makes sense for us to, to do the same. OK. Uh, Darren O'Rourke, what is uh, Sinn Féin policy in terms of electric vehicles? How many electric vehicles would you like to see on the road by 2030? So the, the target is, is uh, a million and, and that's in the, the, the Climate Action Plan. I, I'm not... I, I firmly, I, I don't believe that that's achievable because it, it means essentially every vehicle that's sold between now and 2030 would need to be an electric vehicle. Um, I have to say... I'm, so what would Sinn Féin's target be then? Yeah, well, well, I think the important thing is about the transition and the, the ensuring in the first instance that public transport options and alternative options are, because we, we need that modal shift, but also that the... But do you have a target in terms of electric vehicles? I, I don't think it's as simple as, as a target. I think it's about the mix you have in terms of the, 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 the transport uh, um, uh, environment, if you like. And the important point for me isn't the number of electric vehicles, it's that those people who are dependent on their cars now and will be dependent on their cars in the future, um, that they have electric vehicles. For example, a lot of the electric vehicles we sell at the minute and that are bought at the minute are in places where there are very suitable uh, alternative modes of transport. So you have people who are car dependent in dirty petrol and diesel so cars. So what would Sinn Féin do to change that? So, so a couple of things we need to do is we need to enhance the, the affordability of, of electric vehicles. We need to enhance the... the, the so sec that's subsidies? The, the sec yeah, it is. The second-hand electric vehicle market, for example. I think, okay. you know, we've lost with Brexit, we've lost access to, access to Britain. I know second-hand EV dealers are, are frustrated In with that. In terms of subsidies for those electric cars, because I take your point that they're more fuel-efficient, that they're better cars, yeah. etc., but they are expensive. The average, so, the cheapest, I think, electric vehicle, new electric vehicles, but 30,000. So how much of a subsidy would Sinn Féin uh, put forward yeah. for somebody to purchase an electric so, vehicle? So we, we so we support the, the, the value of the current subsidy regime, but not the, the extent of it. So, for example, last year, 5,400 uh, EVs over a value of €50,000 were, were, were bought. So just, I think be, for people. so just to be clear, you don't think the subsidy should be increased? We, we don't believe the subsidy sh should be increased, but the threshold should be reduced, which means that the, 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 the pot is uh, distributed more evenly. So if you if you can afford a vehicle over €40,000, we don't believe that the, the state should be subsidising that, and that that funding, so the same pot of, fund, of money, should be redistributed to enhance right. the, the second-hand EV market, for I example, and to ensure that, that those areas, you know, I, a, a regional I, distribution... I don't disagree. OK, I, I just... I sorry. It's just a point. I don't disagree with you on that, term, but I think what we do need to do, the real difficult political thing, is going to be the reallocation of road space. Because the truth is, coming out of COVID, what we're seeing as a characteristic, there isn't as much commuting as there used to be. That road space, which we designed our cities, and then everyone drives in, everyone drives home. That's not the characteristic that we want into the future. We want to create spaces in the centre of our cities and towns that make, and villages that make them an attractive place to live, to raise a family. The difficult political thing, and this is so going to require... So you're talking about every, cycle lanes and rural roads, is that what you're talking, talking about? We're talking about bus lanes in our cities being advanced rapidly. Okay, and, and in our rural areas? As well. Rural areas, you don't need the bus lane because you don't have that volume of traffic. Mm. But in our cities and towns, we need to have political courage, all parties okay. working together, to reallocate road space in the way it's been done out in Black Rock, Dunleary. That sort of quick, really dramatic okay. change. And that's where the political dif difficulty is going to be. Uh, Minister... That requires local councils around the country to actually make the call, yeah, OK, we're going to go for it to create a really attractive local Despite space. Despite opposition, perhaps. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to ask you about uh, aviation. It's not part of our uh, carbon budget yet, but there was a story in the paper at the weekend about business class flights, that you as Minister for the Environment have taken one business class flight, I believe, mm. in your time as Minister, but that your Cabinet colleague, Catherine Martin, has taken four business class flights. Um, while she has been minister, along with some of her political advisers and, and press advisers too. At the same time, you have Kieran Cuff, the Green Party MEP, saying we need to you know, get rid of all these cheap 10 euro flights around Europe. They're not good for the environment. Is there not a real hypocrisy there? That on one side, you're saying, stop everybody getting on cheap flights around Europe. But on the other side, you have green ministers hopping on business class flights, which have three times the carbon of an economy seat. Uh, to, to go about their business. Yeah, but you are going about the people's business. You're often getting off that flight and going into 12 hours of meetings, literally one after the other, where you're representing your country on important 
And if you can arrive in a way that you actually represent best, then I, then I believe it is appropriate to, to, to uh, take it. Notwithstanding Aviation, the carbon emissions from those business class we tr seats. We try and offset that and do all the other measures and try and minimise travel. But, act but yes, on occasion, do do that. But can I say... But just, just one thing, because you do talk about offsetting. And I did read that statement from Catherine Martin that those flights are offset. They're offset with taxpayers' money. Yes, but you're there representing the people. In, as I said... So it's easy to offset it when you're dipping into the exchequer funds to do it, isn't it? But you're there. The most important thing on that is you're there actually representing the country and you want to do your best and you want to be the fittest and, uh, and most able to, to uh, do it. You don't as, think it's a credibility issue? No, I believe it's right to try and represent the country to the best of your ability. But can I say this? No sector is going to be able to avoid responsibility. Aviation is going to be part, has to be part of the solution. And not in this sort of way where we're pointing the finger at people, oh, you've done the wrong thing. If we go down the road of trying to climate change people and put all the blame on individuals, it's not going to work. Yeah, but it's but also we... about taking responsibility yeah. and, as you've said time True. and time again, making very practical changes True. and taking a bit of but, pain. But the practical changes will come in a variety of ways. Firstly, the European Union, as I said, is introducing a whole range of legislation to deliver this climate package. Included in that is that there will be a charge on aviation so that it actually all is right. part of the solution. And that is going to be a key element to it. All right, very quickly, uh, Darren O'Rourke. I know Mary Lee MacDonald is due to take flights, isn't she, to Australia? I think it's next week. Do you know, is she flying economy or business class? I don't. I don't have her, her itinerary. I know uh, I have never flown business class, and I, I do appreciate that that mm. sometimes there may be a case in relation to it. I think, I think the point in terms of, though, you know, we're not going to succeed in terms of our, our climate ambition if it's built on carbon shaming and pontificating. I think we have to engage with people. I think the systems that we develop need to work for people. I think in aviation, we need to look at, you know, is it, okay. is there, are there alternatives? Look at sustainable aviation fluids, sustainable aviation, um, because I, I think people will continue to want to fly. All right, look, we're going to have to leave it there. We didn't get to all um, of the uh, subjects we wanted to get, but I do appreciate you both coming in. My thanks to Eamon Ryan and to Darren O'Rourke.